والحمد لله حمدا دائما أبدا فرمدا حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وبعظيم سلطانه والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الصالحين الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم الطف بنا واكتبنا منهم آمين I pray and hope that alhamdulillah you have also read the assignment from the chapter on العلم on knowledge for that is the subject matter of today's session insha'Allah ta'ala um, in the Tezkiyah path in the Tezkiyah process one would soon realize as one studies that carefully and practices that patiently or would take that certainly as granted from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the words of those who spent their lives in this path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that the first and most, uh, and, and most qualifying of the most qualifying elements in Tazkiyah is Al-Ilm العلم. Without ilm there will be no tazakiyah. Without ilm therefore there will be no fruit of tazakiyah. Because what the ilm does my dear brothers and sisters knowledge, ilm العلم يذهب الغفلة العلم يذهب الغفلة ilm begins by removing our uh, lack of awareness by waking us up by generating inside of us bursts of concern and of interest and of fear and of hope and of longing and of grief and of sorrow you all have experienced as we share with each other elements of ilm from different aspects of this ilm uh, that we are sharing with one another that there is something in us at the moment at least there is something that happens inside of the mind of the individual and inside even of your qalb and of your nafs you feel those bursts of emotions you feel those feelings, you feel a change, you feel sometimes even clearing inside of you. You feel sometimes an impetus, a momentum inside of you. You feel again either awe sometimes or fear or fear or hope or longing or love or grief. All of that is by the baraka of ilm. العلم يذهب الغفلة as they say رحمهم الله تعالى والعقل سقال يجل الشهوات والذكر روح يحيي القلب الميت العلم يذهب نور يذهب الغفلة Ilm is, is a light that removes ghafla, lack of, lack of orientation, lack of focus, lack of awareness, lack of consciousness. And al-aql, which is not ilm, that's why sometimes we say, see, I know, but why do people know? They have so much information, we have so much information, we have so much knowledge, but we don't understand certain things. We don't do certain things. Part of the reason is that there is a difference between ilm and aql. There's a difference between part of the reason is there's a difference between ilm and aql, and we shall talk about that later, inshaAllah. That's why they say al aql 
فقال يجل الشهوات an aql is a cleanser a polisher a cleanser that uh, cleanses away and removes uh, the shahawat the appetites meaning the ill effects of the appetites the extreme uh, actualization of the appetites uh, meaning the appetites that we have as human beings the shahawat when they are used in ways that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not intend so al-aql saqqalun yajlu shahawat that's why sometimes when uh, I want to do something, you want to do something bad, huh? and then you feel because of something in else inside of you, which you're aware of as being your mind sometimes. And I'm not saying aql is mind necessarily. Uh, by some simply, or sometimes rational arguments. It says, no, don't do that. And you weigh the consequences. But it's a shahwa. Very strong shahwa to do something that is haram or immoral or illegal or illegitimate. Uh, and then there is something else, your aql. I'm talking even at the at that level that says don't. Yajlu al shahwat. Al aql saqalun yajlu al shahwat wa al dhikru yuhi ruhun yuhi al qalb al mayit. And zikr is associated with the qalb, and as aql was associated with the shahwa, the shahwa, the, the, the master of shahwa, the controller of shahwa here is aql in this parable, in this word of wisdom. And then the giver of life to the qalb is zikr, zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With zikr ruhun, and zikr is a spirit is a soul that gives life to the dead qalb. The fruits of ilm, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, pertaining to one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khashya, isn't it? Huh? The fruit of ilm pertaining to our relationship with Allah is khashya. Or from Allah Azza wa With more ilm, there is yaqaza, there is awakening, and that awakening leads in our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to khashya. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ An ayah that says what means verily um, has khashya from Allah, verily those who have Khashya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who have ilm, are the ulama. Thus, ilm engenders and generates khashya, which is the great prize that, a great prize that we seek in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, the person whose ilm has not led him or her to khashya means that simply an information that has not uh, yet penetrated the depth of the individual and that uh, in the haqiqa that person would not be called the alim in the haqiqa would not be called the alim al-hasan al-basri rahimahullah ta'ala one day one addressed him ya ayyuha al faqih and wanted to ask him a question and, and he says man al faqih uh, who is faqih he says al faqih man khaf Allah wa amala bima amar Allah who is the faqih? Call me faqih. <laughs> Al-Hasan al-Basri. Al-Ladhi kana idha ru'iya dhukir Allah. Al-Hasan al-Basri who, rahimahullah ta'ala, as was described when he is seen, people remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sign of his wilaya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, awliyaa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala man idha ru'u dhukir Allah. Says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Awliyaa Allah مَنْ إِذَا رُؤُوا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ An indicator of the wilaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in people that when you see those people you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They make you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naturally. There is some wave subhanallah that penetrates us. So the person who has ilm but that ilm has not led to khashya has not led to khawf from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has not led to mahabba or at least before that to longing and to desire for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that cannot be called ala al-haqiqa you remember what we said yesterday haqiqa in the likulli shayin haqiqatan that cannot be called ala al-haqiqa alim but could be called alim majazan could be called alim majazan because the person uh, one has information, has data, has knowledge, but that ilm has not led to the khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the fruits of ilm is khashya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the fruits of ilm, my dear brothers and sisters, in our relationship with our nafs is sabr. <coughs> was being again uh, pointed out earlier in this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of, of struggle and of mujahada on the road ilm, when we acquire ilm alhamdulillah, the fruit of ilm in our relationship with our nafs is sabr and that's why we always and I'm going always to emphasize for myself first and then for you my brothers and sisters is that this ilm be a regular diet be a regular diet and I will continue to assert it and to remind you of it and myself of it and I'm emphasizing the adjective regular diet of ilm not occasional not once a week not every Sunday and Friday it's better than nothing of course but that which will enable us to go on and climb up the hill and walk up the hill essentially is a regular diet of ilm. Sometimes I'm unable to walk up the path and to continue. Not that I do not have some ilm and I know certain things, but that ilm is not a continuous diet, is not a regular diet, is not repetitive. I do not review it, I do not memorize it, I do not keep it, I do not la ahfaz. It has to be regular, a regular diet of ilm, because especially as, alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, you all realize when you go back, when we go back to that which we call the regular rat race of life and the environment of which we have a choice, we feel weak because we have a lot of influences that have to be balanced by so many other factors, most important of which is ilm, the regular diet of ilm in my family, in my home, in the masjid, and not only in the masjid, in my home, and my home has to be also a reflection of what I learn in the masjid, and perhaps even sometimes in some instances better. العلم ثمرة العلم في علاقة المرء مع نفسه الصبر It helps us in sabr Keep regular And I say regular to the extent that sometimes Alhamdulillah for those Sometimes it's a rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean hourly Not only daily in some form of pursuit of ilm uh, and zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And the thamara of ilm in the relationship of the abd with dunya is what? What do you think it would be? Did I hear something? Naam? Aywa, zuhd. Thamaratu. al ilmi في علاقة الإنسان المسلم مع الدنيا بينه وبين الدنيا الزهد في الدنيا The more one has ilm the more one has ilm and has therefore ilm of what dunya really is and the more that comes and I'm saying ilm now you open have not defined the boundaries of that ilm the more one has ilm the more one 
will his or her qalb most importantly pulls away from dunya because then the dunya is uncovered for what it really is and thus my dear brothers and sisters this ilm that we are talking about as the most essential element for tazkiyah it is so because it awakens us it awakens us in this way, in this manner. And in, most importantly, it awakens us to the relationship between ourselves and our Khaliq and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin to ask the proper questions, don't we? Hmm? We begin to ask good questions, even though sometimes they may seem to you that are bothersome. Or, 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 or too much or no it begins that way and we begin to wonder of this relationship with the creator and who is the creator and why are we here and uh, uh, the objective behind uh, us being here and as we continue as, as, as you have in the summary as we continue to do that, subhanAllah, we discover one of the most basic things that we are creatures and not creators. With ilm and reflection, we realize that we certainly were not the direct cause of our own being. And this simple, this simple realization, this very simple realization, logically implies I am not a creator. And since I am not a creator, it intrinsically, intrinsically implies that there is a creator. It is that simple. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا كُلُّ خَبْتَارٍ كَفُورٍ and that will lead me to realize that there is a relationship then between the creator and the created and as I continue to learn more and reflect more subhanallah and look at this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to these sounds and more of the beauty of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in me and outside of me and all more of when more of the orderliness of the creation inside of me and outside of me is revealed to me through that ilm that awakens me and reflection subhanallah then I begin to form some type of attachment to this creator isn't it natural? many of you or some of you who who would experience uh, things similar to this when وَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْأَنْثَالِ عُلُوٌ كَثِيرًا The example that comes to mind and I remember a few years ago when I was standing here that's exactly what overwhelmed me a very very powerful feeling as I stood here to begin this this part on knowledge and I was subhanallah uh, overwhelmed within me about a desire to know who the artist was this painting called the world and as I looked at that lake remember first and it was just an awesome something happened inside of me of how beautiful this is and how serene and I l- looked through my qalb as though I was looking at the very details of this painting and there was suddenly a very powerful burst, very, very strong. Ya Allah, I want to know you as the painter of this scenery. You have a painting by an abd, by a human being. If you have developed your consciousness in art, after knowledge of art, and you look at that painting and you don't know who the painter was and you see beauty and intricacy and then 
I really want to meet this artist. I really want to meet this artist. And that's the exact feeling that overwhelmed me. And that should overwhelm us. I want to know this artist. al Al-Musawwar. And then from wanting to know him and desire to know, to know him, that turns into, now, that attachment turns into longing. And the more I look at that painting, and those paintings, and the painting of the world, part of which is me, now I begin, well, to love the painter. And that love gradually continues until it turns into worship. I love him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the worship. Then, subhanAllah, in this way, this is our way, in this way, and I'm trying to express to you what I really felt, and I feel sometimes then this in this way there are many other ways in this way suddenly there is a very tasty aroma to the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا Verily, I have created jinns and humans for the only purpose that they be my abad. And now, how can I, I, how can I not be the abd? That is to love, to love to the extent of the abudiyya. This most beautiful maker the beauty of whom I began to realize through what he did the painting made me gradually experience actually and and, uh, uh, interiorize his beauty by his af'al subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his deeds, I begin to discover his sifat. Isn't it? Think about that. By his deeds, I begin to discover his sifat, his attributes. And like when you look at that painting very carefully, if you have the ilm and knowledge, because remember this is the result of that. Ilm and knowledge. Then you begin to have an insight into the characteristics of the painter. Oftentimes many paintings tell, tell you about uh, some even hidden characteristics of the painter, isn't it? Some of you may know that. And then from the characteristics of the painter, I'm led, I, the muqarrab will be led to the um, let me stop there after that those who have experienced it is closed doors so the in my dear brothers and sisters the ilm leads to this realization the ilm leads to yaqaba to awakening and to desire and to longing and to love and to ibadah. Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al ulama. Al ilm is in the Arabic language from the same root as al alam. 
and they mean the same thing. In both the Arabic language, ilm and alam mean the same thing. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ says Allah Azza wa Jalla about Isa alayhi salam's coming. Ilm, which means alam, which means alama, which means ma'lam, all of the same meaning, which means in English a flag, which means a milestone, which means an indicator. And therefore, ilm is a flag. You know, to show me the path is a milestone to show me the path. I cannot uh, walk the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with jahl, with ignorance. I will never, and I should not, and I cannot, and I ought not to claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the maker, with jahl, with ignorance. Ever. But, there must be ilm. And that ilm indicates to me the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how I walk that path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-ilm nur. Definitely, ilm is nur. Illumination, it is light. And uh, that light inside of the abd, when it persists, Yes, it's going to lead to the realization that as a abd now, uh, there is my ma'bud. And that abudiya uh, relationship requires that the abd returns to the master, isn't it? There cannot be a abd without master. There cannot be a abd away from the master. Can you run away from your master? Can you? Can you? You can, yes. <laughs> you can run from a, a tyrant master. You can run from a human master. But that master who is ja- gentle and kind and generous, if you run away from him who has given you everything and treated you gently and kindly, then you are in, in great. Well, you are volume. Uwais al-Qarani, it is said, rahmahullah ta'ala, this story just, subhanallah, came to me now. I don't know about the authenticity of, of, of that story. Uh, Imam ibn al-Jawzi relates it also. That Uwais al-Qarani is khayru tabi'een. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa described him as the best of tabi'een. And he has not seen him. He's never seen Uwais al-Qarani. And Uwais al-Qarani had never seen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and this were of the nubuwat of Rasulullah sallallahu The best of the tabi'een is a man from Yemen called Uwais. Who was very, very kind and ob- obedient to his mother. This is how he described him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that he has a mark somewhere, I think, on his body. And that he told the companions, when he comes, and if you see him, Ask him to ask Allah for forgiveness for you. And guess what? After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Abu Bakr, in the time of Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arba, every time people from Yemen come traveling to, to Medina, he inquires, are you from Yemen? Yes. Anyone, do you know anyone called Uwais? Look at, this is Umar. And finally one day there was a caravan. And Uwais was there. And it is said that the first thing that Omar did went to him humbly, humbly and asked him, please ask Allah for forgiveness for me. This Uwais who sometimes used to walk in the streets and children would throw stones at him. Thinking this is a mad person. Dressed humbly with one cloth. And, and they would, you know, some children. And then it is said he would tell them, Oh please, little kids, uh, avoid to hit me in my legs. Everywhere else but not my legs. Otherwise, I will not be able to prostrate to my Lord. 
Uis. And it is said there was a caravan passing by going to Hajj. And he walked and joined them. And he looked like this, looked like a slave running away from his master. So they went to him and when he came, so they were suspicious. He says, uh, who are you? He says, I'm an abd. I'm a slave. I'm an abd. He says, abd? Are you running away from your master? He said, yes. Are you running away from your master? He said, yes. I have done so many things wrong to my master. Was he bad to your master? He said, no, he was very kind to me. And subhanAllah, the story goes on that uh, actually they didn't uh, care much of him and it was very, very cold out at night and he would not ask them for shelter or and he stayed out in the cold and the story goes Wallahu ta'ala alam that he died and and, uh, and after that after when they began to try to bury him then many many karamat began to to happen one after the other and then they began to be wondrous then afraid of because there was a succession of those after he died until I found out that he was always Al-Qarani later on running away from your master we run away from our master to our master we run away from our master to our master Al-Firar min Allah ila Allah once we realize our relationship of Ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the abd must return to his master. And thus the journey itself of abd to his ma'bud. Uwais was running away from his master to his master. Of course, Uwais knew that in accordance to this story, if the story is authentic. Uwais, most of all, radiallahu ta'ala anh, was always running to his master and from his master. And it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the kaf and the cave of those who are runaways. And it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into whom we run away as we run away from him. We run away into him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the realization of ibudiyah. Subhanallah. Imagine, please think about this. Running away from no one into him or her except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very rarely have I seen a parable like this. Do you remember which one? Running away from some, from a person to the same person. Yeah. Yeah, little children. Hey, little child, little innocent child, when his father, or in particular his mother or her mother, disciplines them, go away. Then the child cries and cries as that happens and, and comes back and she says, go away, and he pushes forward to come into his mother. Only that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arhamu bi ibadihi min al ummi bi waladiha. And Allah Azza wa has more rahma for his ibad, ibad than the mother for her child. And the rahma that the mother shows for her child 
is a, an insignificant portion of the 1% of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he distributed amongst all the creation. You know the text. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah he divided into 100 parts. One part of that rahmah he spread amongst all his creation. And of that 1% of his rahmah, that is the rahmah of the mother towards her children. A human mother, an animal mother. Jinns and humans. Says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa All of that is part of the 1% of his, rah- of his rahmah. And he kept 99% of his rahmah for his ibad, the abd, the runaway abd to him on the day of judgment. And he kept 99 of his rahmah, Allahu Akbar, for the day of judgment for his ibad, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right now this is part of ilm, isn't it? Billahi alaykum. Billahi alaykum. Doesn't this create some at least shawq for this maker? For this ma'bud? Doesn't it create inside of mind and even now you feel something more than mind. You feel something inside about this maker, about this ma'bud that I really, I really want to be with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to walk my path as an abd to my Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus, realizing that my peace of mind and of heart, that my joy, that my happiness, all of them lie in being with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the barakah of ilm. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وصل الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله. Let's take our break here and we'll resume in shortly. Inshallah, in seven or ten minutes.